Welcome to Flash Fiction from Giant's Reach by Steve Cook. In the world of Giant's Reach, uplifted animals are ubiquitous. They're everywhere, they can do every job that a human can do. Some of them worse, some of them better. I've previously had animals that were builders, because to me it stands to reason that any animal that can build a den or a dam or or anything like that would be good at structural engineering. This story features an animal that's good at cooking, and a very disagreeable human indeed. A Culinary Challenge Doris lifted her spoon out of the bowl, lips peeled back from her teeth in disgust. There is an object, she said, voice rising with every word, in my soup, server. The offending item, a hair, hung from the spoon, and as high as she could reach her hand, the end of it still dangled below the surface of the soup. The man with the combed over hair was at her side in a second, a white tea towel draped over his wrist. Uh, uh, madame... Doris simply turned and fixed him with a furious glare. The server wilted under the pressure of it. Ah, I will inform the chef, he said, trying to reach around to take the bowl away, but Doris's hand was faster. No, I think I want to meet this chef, she said, getting up. I've heard that it's an animal now, and I'd come to see if the rumours were true. This used to be a high-class establishment, young man, not some slum kitchen. The server backed away, hands up. Uh, Madame, no, you cannot go into the kitchens. I really must protest. Out of my way! Doris stormed past the server, heading towards the swinging doors that led to the kitchen. The server made a spirited effort to get in her way, but the old woman was more spry than her years and build suggested, and she darted past him. The kitchen was hot, the large stone ovens lit. Several fires had large cauldrons of soup or stew hung over them, and the smell of fresh bread hung deliciously over everything. Several people were attending the various stations, but holding sway in the centre was a large, long-haired rabbit. His floppy ears twitched as soon as she pushed into the room, golden eyes fixing her with a furious gleam. The server pushed in behind her just a moment too late. What is the meaning of this? the rabbit signed, baring his teeth. I'm so sorry, sir. This customer insisted on coming in here, the server babbled. Doris shoved him to one side and put her hands on her hips. I knew it, she shouted. An animal, unclean, hair in everything, and taking jobs of good, law-abiding humans who just want to earn an honest day's wage. It's disgusting. Slowly, the activity in the kitchen died down. The chopping of herbs stopped, until only the bubbling from the cauldrons and the roar of the fire held sway. The rabbit chef stared down at Doris, and she suddenly remembered that it was twice her height. First off, the rabbit signed, I am a graduate from the Yohallan School for Culinary Excellence, and I will thank you to remember that. Second, I have no physical contact with the food for entirely practical reasons. I am hired for my expertise, not my lack of thumbs. Be that as it may, Doris said, that hair in my soup didn't come from a person now, did it? The rabbit's ears stood up slightly and it narrowed its eyes. Give me the hair, he signed. The server passed the bowl over to the rabbit, who took the long hair out and cleaned it off with a rag. Then he brought it to his nose and inhaled sharply. Not rabbit, he signed. Well, of course you'd say that, Doris said indignantly. But the rabbit had dropped to all fours and was nosing towards her. Here, what do you think you're doing? The rabbit sat up and bared his teeth again. Her bag. Open it? Doris clutched at the small leather bag hung on one of her arms. Don't you dare touch my bag, you flea-bitten animal! One of the chef's assistants was quicker. He snapped open the bag and delved inside it, drawing out a large ball of tangled hair. It was a perfect match for the hair from the soup. Well, she said, but all the bluster was gone from her voice. Well, hmm, however did that get there, hmm? Perhaps there has, after all, been some mix-up. The rabbit signed something too quick for her to read, and the server's hand was on Doris's arm. I'm sorry, madam, but the chef has asked that you be escorted out. I'm being thrown out? Outrageous! 
The rabbit snorted. We reserve the right to refuse service, he signed, especially to speciesists. Get out. Thirty seconds later, the restaurant door slammed behind Doris. Impotently, she stamped her foot, adjusted her bag, and stormed off down the street. You've been listening to Flash Fiction written for my Patreon, Giant's Reach. If you'd like to become a supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash giantsreach, where you can find more fiction just like this, 